morning. Welcome back. How long's it It's now the 2nd of September and it's Saturday. Now yesterday, Friday, I sort of promised myself a day's rest. It didn't quite happen, but I didn't video anything. So yesterday what I did, I just came up and finished off the clocker boxes, put the straw in, the drinkers, the feeders, etc. And we took the two clockers out of the big shed and we set them on eggs. Now then, Mother Nature's fickle and we can't plan everything that we would like. Now the irony of all of this is the Lego ones, the white ones, they don't normally clock. It's a breed that doesn't usually clock. However, those leg ones have a slight cross in them. And this particular one is clocking. But the little bantam, which are normally really, really good clockers, and you can rely on them, decided when I put it in the clocker box, it wasn't having it. And it refused point blank to sit on the eggs. I even locked it in the little compartment for an hour. Thinking once it gets the idea that it's going to settle on those eggs, that we take the board away and it will just stay put. But it didn't. So I left them in all day. I came up this morning to feed the birds and water them. First thing I done was check on the clockers and the white leg on is still sitting the eggs. Never moved, never moved. But the little black bantam was just sitting there pacing up and down the cage front trying to get out. So we let her out and put her back in the big shed. Now the irony of this is she immediately jumped back in the nest box on a couple of eggs and started clocking them. But because the hens are always laying in there we can't really set her on eggs in that big box. Technically we could but the problem with that is um, the other hens will be laying eggs and she'll be picking pulling more eggs underneath her and she could potentially end up ha uh, sitting on infertile eggs because the cockerel died and the other two aren't old enough to line them um, and not hatching the ones that I wanted to put under so it's a non-runner. I also never used the leg on for incubation before and this is the problem you have unless you know you've got some good reliable clockers you don't want to be putting really valuable eggs that you want under them, just in case. So the ones that I've purchased, the eggs I've purchased and shipped, they've arrived two days ago and they've just been sitting in pointy nose down. Once they've been through the postal system, they need to sit and rest pointy nose down for at least 24 hours, but they've now been sitting 20, uh, 48 hours. And today we've got to get them set. So, hence the building of the incubator last night. Uh, that's pretty much what I done yesterday at home. So I built that little incubator. I've now finished it off. It wasn't finished, it was just on test. And we'd run that incubator on a 90 amp hour battery for um, 15 hours. And there was still 40% capacity left in the battery. So we know we're going to get Pretty much 24 hours out of the battery, and of course there's no solar panel trickle charge in that battery back again, and putting something back into the battery whilst it was being used. Now I made this incubator with just a 21 watt card indicator bulb, an orange card indicator bulb. It's sufficient, it, it heats up really quickly, and it holds its temperature fantastically between 37.3 and 37.8 which is ideal for hatch and chicks. I've now put a little view window in there and I've now used some hot glue, tidied up the cable and then used some hot glue to fix the um, temperature regulator and the cabling to the lid. We'll spin you around and give you a look at that in a minute. I've also in there I've got a little wee 5 volt USB fan and that runs on the battery banks and we tested that overnight on the battery bank and it had only used 25% um, of the power in the battery bank over 15 hours. 
So with a battery bank and a battery, we can say we're going to get at least a full day, 24 hours, before we need to change the batteries. Now this is going to be a bit of a clap, but Mrs C doesn't like me hatching chicks in the house. Because basically they smell once they hatch and one thing or another and you leave them in a, a brooder box. And for the first few weeks they can smell if they're not out in a shed or up in the open air. So that's understandable. So I had to improvise and build myself an incubator. I'll be building another one. We'll show you step by step how we do that one. It'll be a much bigger one than this. And I've also got several 12 volt factory made US uh, incubators sent as well. And the reason behind several is to test to see some are some good and some aren't. And do a comparison. So that's going to use a lot of batteries but thankfully I think I've got about 9 or 10 batteries. So we can always have a couple charged up, back up, every single day. It means a trip up to the allotment every single day for to swap out the batteries. But that isn't a problem. Because the end result will be worth it. At least I'm hoping it will. Right, so the first thing you'll notice, I'll put in an inspection window. Yes, it's not pretty, but I, just, I was trying to decide what size I wanted the window, and that's, that's sufficient, but it's double glazed as well. And this is just the bottom of a plastic Tupperware carton cut out, and same on the inside, and make a double glazed window, if you will, so we can see inside the incubator. And then you'll see we just put some hot, we've tidied the cabling up, we put some hot glue on here just to hold it all in place. Same with the thermometer, you can see you can pull away at that. We have our battery leads that comes off. And then we have our USB lead, which is the fan. So when we put them to one side, you can see it's pretty neat. And we've got a... Uh, an escape hole at the top, it doesn't need to be any bigger than that because we want a flow of oxygen in here as well, they need oxygen. So we've got a little tiny uh, hole, it's maybe a tad big that, I might just seal that up partially. Let's give you a look inside now. And all we did was poke holes through the lids. And there we have it, it's as simple as this, it's a bulb holder. A 12 volt indicator bulb which is designed to go on and off and on and off and on and off so it doesn't harm it. A little 5 volt USB fan which will blow the warm air from the bulb around. And this is the temperature sender which we just put a stick on and a drop of hot glue hold it in place to keep it at a level just above the eggs. And it works an absolute treat and it gets up to heat, uh, heat really really fast now bear in mind this is just to hatch they'll be moved into a much bigger one for brooding but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it and the first job today while it's nice and sunny and warm is to get this grass cut again I can't believe the length of it again already it's just an ongoing chore constantly keeping this grass right so yesterday I also when I was setting the clock is I leveled all this ground out again around the path and cleared the path down and I'm going to actually have to cover the path as well because you can see they've dug up again there to basically give the soil a chance to settle down and firm around the path and a turn catch on the inside to stop them coming in. Follow me. So I've also cleared all of this path down again where they covered it in sludge, sort of semi-leveled this and firmed the bank around here. I've got some grass seed for here as well. And uh, just put myself a bit of a walk through for now. So this is the two clocker boxes that we got finished. And the bottom box we put the little black hen in and we've got drinkers and feeders in there as well and she just wasn't having it basically she just was not happy in there so this sometimes does happen with them um, and you can see I've put the sharp sand in the bottom as well which is great for absorbing 
the uh, mess. But in this top box, we have the leg on. Also with the drinker and feeder and the sand. And I'm not going to disturb her because she's still sitting. Now she's sitting dummy eggs at the moment. When I say dummy eggs, I mean she's sitting in fertile eggs. We just put two or three in fertile eggs in there. Me on. Um, to make sure she was going to stay put, that's what you do. You put them in for a, a day, 24 hours, make sure they really want to sit and hatch. If they're still there at the end of 24 hours, it's pretty safe, usually, to set them with fertile eggs, which and I've got some for the set today. Yeah. Um, but they're not valuable eggs, they're, um, they're just hybrid eggs off me neighbour. Right, it's now 2.30pm in the day. So I've been at uh, cutting the grass for a good all three hours. But I've done all my grass and the neighbours too. Big fields as well. Now, my back is still giving me quite a bit of jib, so today I decided that's a big job, but it's one I can do without exerting myself too much. Pretty much sitting on the lawnmower, yeah, the emptying of the box. Isn't it? A little bit of effort, but yeah. All of the really big jobs that I wanted done, the chickens cleaned out, the shed up, <clears throat> the paths laid, the grass cut, and a few other bits and pieces besides. They've, I've got all of the jobs done that I wanted on this week off. And uh, tomorrow will just be a chill day, maybe even only half a day. Maybe come up and set the incubators and and then go down home before lunch. Now another note to make is, you'll see on the front, I have tiny holes poked in along the bottom. And that's for the intake of air. So it enters from the bottom. And because heat rises, it exhausts from the top. And it's important that you have air flow. We only have the one hole escape at the top away from the bulb as well. So it slowly releases. Right, I've decided I'm going to set it for real. So I've taken all the eggs back out. They were eating eggs. And I've got one silky cross with light Sussex here. These are my Isabella Leghorn hatching eggs, hopefully fertile that we ordered. Rather expensive, but if we get them, great. And these here are a mixture of hybrid crossed with, road, uh, crossed with Leghorn cockerel. So they'll be good egg layers no matter what, off my neighbours. So, we're going to set all of these. The clock is going to get six. Then we're going to have six hybrids plus this one here on one side and the Isabella Leghorns on the other side. Right, there we have it. We have six Isabella Leghorn eggs and I've spread them out in different areas of the um, incubator to see if there's a certain area where they hatch better or not. Of course, they've got to be fertile to hatch, but we'll wait and see. Uh, we can always candle them at about seven days and find out if they are fertile. And then we've got uh, six hybrid in the little silky Sussex in there. Close the lid and let them get on with it. I've kept six back for the clocker, which I'm going to go and put under the clocker now. So they're all getting set at exactly the same time. Now, got another good thing is, depending on how many we get, if we get, I should be able to take what chicks comes out of here and throw them under the clocker and she'll look after and brood all of these without any further intervention. Now I can hear you all shouting, well what about turning the eggs? But I've thought of that as well. In a simplistic form, this will work. Twice a day, in my experience, is sufficient. The more we can do it, the better. But while I'm up here in the evenings, we can always turn them two or three times. So basically, all we do is put the box like that. And because they're in these egg trays, they can't roll out. It's holding them in place. 
and there we go. We've reached temperature on this, <coughs> so I'm happy. And then, obviously, when we want to turn the eggs, all we need to do is press down on this. Put another one. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so it's a bit cack-handed. And that balances it back up. And then all I do is take this side out. And the eggs tip that way. So you're basically just giving it a rocking motion. And that will be sufficient. Right, <clears throat> that's pretty much it for today. At least I've got the incubator set now. So we've got uh, 12, 13, yeah, 12, 13, 18, 19. We've got 19 eggs set. How many we'll get if we get a, well, we'll just have to wait and see. And if you want to see, you'll need to hit that subscribe button, select the bell icon, select all, and follow me along and that will alert you every time I put up a new video. Welcome to all my new sub recent subscribers, much appreciated. Thanks for all your likes, comments, dislikes, subscriptions, suggestions and your donations. I really do appreciate it. As always, wherever you are in the world, please stay safe, be practical and keep yourselves out of harm's way. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you again in the next video.